Well, I'll go through my list of questions then. Um, and then well, I watched the biography uh, yesterday on the night before half last the other night and then yesterday finished it off. And it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I noted down a few questions that I thought of while I was watching okay. that. Um, it was really lovely to watch you two together oh. talking and it was very sweet. <laughs> we're, we're very bonded. Yeah, <laughs> we could tell. Um, okay, so upon watching that and seeing how your the relationship that you and Lou have, I thought maybe you could tell uh, tell all of, all of us um, what are your what are the secrets or or what does Scripture say about having a happy marriage? Oh, I, I having a happy marriage, knowing your place in the marriage. I think. Um, yeah. And I know that's not a very popular idea, but. I obey my husband even when I disagree with him and um, as long as I obey him then I know that I'm going to be covered I mean you know far be it to have this be true but if Lou made a mistake in discernment then as long as I obey him I'm covered it's all going to be in his head but I'll be safe <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, but that's not, that's mainly it. Just knowing that I have a, a gift from Yahuwah, someone that I can honor and love and obey. And I haven't always done that. And when I didn't love and honor and obey him, it was nothing but discord. Terrible, terrible discord. But once I started obeying him and being some, and then he respects me also. It's not just a one-way street, it because the the loving and honor and obeying, it works both ways. If I'm being respectful of him, then he's respectful of me. It doesn't mean and and knowing that he's he loves me regardless. I mean, if he's feeling bad and I cross him the wrong way or I say something wrong. Yeah, he'll he'll remind me in very stern words, fellas, you're speaking to your husband. That's probably about as harsh as he ever gets with me is he'll remind me <laughs> and, and I mean that that's that's like I said, that's the worst thing he says to me. And um but no knowing that even when he says that, that he still loves me, be you know, that it, that I can always depend upon him, that I and I don't ever have to, there, we never have that wall built up. When, when we were first married, we first, we had these, this wall built up between us because he'd hurt me on this and then I'd hurt him on that. And, and I, you could just feel this wall get thicker and thicker. And then once you hood tore down that wall, I don't let that wall build up. If I see it building up, if I feel this, and the enemy tries to come between. And if I feel this feeling like I can't talk to him or I'm mad at him, I don't want to talk to him, then I think that's wrong. That feeling isn't supposed to be there. And I will just defy that feeling and I'll just go talk to him. When I feel like I can't talk to him the most or I'm the most mad at him, I'll just go talk to him. I'll put my arms around him and hug him and then that wall just comes tumbling down. That's... Uh, experience maturity okay wonderful and how would, what would you say to someone who say their husband wasn't treating them like you're saying how it goes both ways their husband's not treating them that way um, and they're finding it difficult to do what you're saying because of that I would say to them to pray because when you pray for someone he doesn't just change the person you're praying about sometimes he changes you and you might not be able to see yourself as the other person does and even if you are I mean you could be just as innocent as every all get out and the other person is is really the bad guy but if you pray for that bad guy then eventually he's going to change your heart somehow some way some word that you'll do or say will melt the other, you know. And and I think Proverbs says a kind word turns away wrath. So if the other person is being mean to you, if you can humble yourself 
and be kind back. Always be kind back. You don't return anger for anger because that's what Yahushua said. That's what the Gentiles do. But you return unkindness with love, and that proves that you are His. Wonderful. And so you were talking about the walls building up. Um, are you guys? Do you guys talk about everything amongst, like, between each other, like everything that happens? each day or or in your life are you um, very open in that way like talking about any little thing you know it, it's we don't have a whole lot of time for that but it, it's funny when, when I've had a really bad day and I don't want to talk about it Lou will push me and push me and say well so tell me about your day and I'm like I don't want to talk about it I've had an awful day you know and he'll just okay well let's talk and then if he keeps on I'll eventually start letting little stuff out and then I start feeling better because he'll he'll know how to pray for me I guess but yes I we we do I talk to him about every little thing you know even especially anything to do with money I mean, even if it's mine, minor little bits of money, if I'm going to do it and he's not going to be there with me when I do it, I'll just say, you know, I, I wanted to do this little thing and it's going to cost this much, but, and he'll, he'll say, well, do it or don't do it. Or, you know, it's, and if he says don't do it, then that wall starts building up. And I'm like, but I wish I hadn't have asked him and then I could do it, but... <laughs> But then I get over it because, you know, I'm usually I'll find out later, boy, I'm glad I asked him. I'm glad he said don't do it because look look what could have happened if I had have done that, you know. But my yeah. husband is, I think if women, there's a reason men were given over women to, you know, and, and even if, if the woman, if the wife thinks her husband's, a real dummy and doesn't know and sometimes I think that of less well he he doesn't know what's going on here he doesn't understand this and but he probably understands a whole lot more than I give him credit for you know yeah. when, women are smarter we know that but men are wiser <laughs> fantastic um, you mentioned in the biography about how you used to um, celebrate or like do something for New Year's Eve and I had actually asked Mark that before because I mean we don't do anything on New Year's Eve anyway but what is the story behind New Year's Eve and it's because you're mentioning how it's pagan and everything oh boy Liz when you need to ask that for um uh New Year's Eve I know it's pagan I'm it's, it's well I know here's what I know and you can probably have Mark ask Lou for a better clarification but I know that Lou has told me you know the the little the little baby that's supposed to represent the new year and, and the old man that's the old year they represent some pagan deity I can't okay. tell you the name of it um, but the whole idea of the of celebrating the old year I'm sure it's wrapped up with you know the Christmas thing you know, I'm I'm sure it's all involved in that somehow, some way, but I, I yeah. honestly I I'm not real clear on it. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, uh, another thing that I had um been thinking about this week is um in one of Josiah's mass books um he was supposed to be learning about the days of the week, and I crossed off that page and went on to the next one. But then my mum started asking him what the day of the week was and things started happening where people were saying, oh, we'll do this on that day and things. And he didn't know because we only talk, refer to the days as the first day, second day, third day, and then the Sabbath at the end of the week. So I, I wanted to ask you about things like, and, and like days of the week is just one of the things that you'd come across, but it's the only one on top of my mind that we shouldn't be using, but then the kids kind of need to know it to function in the world um, what do we do? Like, do we just teach it to them and tell them it's wrong, but they need it? Or how does it go about teaching the kids that sort of thing? You know, I think it's important to teach them, the, um, even though it is pagan, I think it's important for them to, to understand why it's pagan. I, okay. um, I taught my, my sons the, the days of the week and 
I, and I taught them, and Lou taught them what those days represent. But yes, I think it's important for them to know it. Um, and I, th I think that was when I was teaching them the days of the week. I think that was before we ourselves were practicing not saying them. Okay. You know, be I've, because, you know, we learned step by step as we grew. And then we learned that and one of the things, you know, like I, I wanted to bring up when we were talking we were sitting around on Sabbath one day. We had just learned um, about the Sabbath, and we were sitting around, and Lou was getting ready to go to work. This was very early on, and Lou was supposed to go to work that day, and then he said, I want to read something to you. He says, remember the Sabbath and keep it set apart. And he says, you shall not work. He says, I don't think I'm supposed to go into work today. And that was the very first time he started keeping Sabbath. And so it was really strange. Suddenly I had, you know, Lou was Lou worked seven days a week, and suddenly I had him home on Sabbath. And that was a double time. I didn't know how to act. Like, you're really going to stay here with me and the boys? You know, you're not going to go to work? And it was wonderful. It really was. But it, we learned step by step. So I think not saying the days of the week was something that we learned later on and I had already taught my boys what the days of the week were, especially since Michael, he was going into a um, Christian school right up until the fifth grade. So of course he, and then Adam was growing up and now, honestly, I think they, they would need to know just so they can mm -hmm. function in society. I, I would have, I have a hard time when I talk to my customers, I said, well, you know, you're probably going to get that on third day of the week. That most of the people don't even know how to start counting the days of the week because they think the work, the beginning of the work week, you know, yeah. traditionally M, M day, they think is the first day of the week. And mm -hmm. they, so they, they can't even count up the days, you know, to know what day is that's going to be. So I, I usually say something like, well, that would be, you know, what you call Tuesday. And I'll actually say the word um, I'll say, you know, the day that you would call this, you know, if they don't know what day I'm talking about. Okay. I don't know if I answered your question, but yeah. Yeah, no, you did. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Um, you did mention as well in the uh, biography about um, how when you were having treatment for your cancer the first time around that you did not um, have chemotherapy. Can you expand a little bit more on what you how what you believe about cancer treatments and, and the medical um, way and how you went about everything? I would love to. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I well actually let me clarify that I, I might have misspoke. Um, I, I they went for the chemotherapy actually two times. Uh, okay. When the doctor called, they sent us to an endocologist. Is that what it's called? An endocrinologist. Oncologist. Oncologist. Yeah. Oncologist. And they sent me there, and I didn't understand why I was going there because they removed my breast, I mean, what's left, and he said, well, I think, you know, this is a real old man, he couldn't even, he, he was practically falling asleep between breasts, and um, he was telling me that he, that I needed to do the chemotherapy, and it was his advice, and da, 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 and, and Lou was so scared, because he thought I was going to die from this, even though I'd had the cancer removed, and he was holding my hand and says, no, don't argue with me about this, I want you to do this, just do it, I said, okay. So I went twice for the chemotherapy. You can feel the death going into your veins. And Lou was yeah. there with me every time I went and held my hand through the whole thing. And I told him, I said, I feel this death. I couldn't stand it. It, I can't even describe it. It, it you know, the only thing I can say it would, it, it was almost like I felt demons coming into my body. I mean, that's seriously bad. And um, so that. I, I went, and then I was on pills for a week, and then I'd go back the following week for another dose, and and I think I went there twice, and then I was supposed to take a break, and then 
go back. And I called Lou and I said, Lou, I can't go. I can't go back. And he says, I was just calling you to tell you I didn't want you to go. And I was so, oh, what? I just, I said, thank you. Thank you. I just started crying. I said, thank you, because I can't do this. This is killing me. And um, it's a horrible thing. And you you know that more people are, you know, you'll say so-and-so died. They had cancer, but they died from complications. The cancer doesn't kill people. It's the doctor's treatments. So what I did is, is I had friends um, who had, were familiar with different, you know, back then they the thing they were pushing was this Easy Act tea, and I went and searched for the correct Easy Act tea, and some people had it in pill forms, and then other people wanted me to brew it in powder, and and finally I found fluorescence tea, and that the Easy Act tea is four herbs, the fluorescence tea has eight, and they claim that they were the original. Formula. Easyac is backwards for Cassie. I think anybody that studied this at all knows that. But the fluorescence is supposed to be truly handed. Apparently, it was passed to two different people, and they're you know the one kept the name Easyac and the other changed it, added herbs to it, and changed it to fluorescence. But I think the fluorescence. I've tried both, and I think the fluorescence is more effective if nothing because the of the additional four herbs um but i i did i searched and studied for until i found fluorescence and then i just took that for 14 years and i've always been tuned into you know matters of you know treating cancer or preventing cancer was, was did that answer your question? I'm I'm sorry. I'm having trouble. I start talking. And I forget what was I supposed to be talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having trouble focusing today. No, just about that. What? So um, you use the fluorescence tea, and then um, this time around you've been doing the nutrition, which we talked about the other week, wasn't it? That um, to help. Yeah. Um, I I found out that just taking the fluorescence tea and not changing your diet is not going to do it. You know, you have to, it's, I mean, if you're constantly taking death into your body, trying to drink a little fluorescence tea to counteract it, it it's just not going to work. There, there is so much death around us in the food that we eat and the, you know, if you use microwaves, you know, mi microwave ovens are, are terrible. Um, I, I do use a microwave oven, just limited. There's sometimes I, I, I go on Sabbath because I, won't, I can't start a fire, so I can't use my stove. So if I want something heated up, I might heat it up in the microwave if I don't want to use my oven. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm babbling. Um, but there is so much death, and, and especially the fast food restaurants and, and all the additives that are added to foods. You know, if you if prepared foods... They've got all, you don't even know what all that stuff is. If you can't pronounce the, the ingredient, you really shouldn't eat it. And that, plus the microwaves that are going through your, not just your microwave ovens, but the microwaves and cell phones and radio waves, and it, it's everywhere. Everywhere is just, um, you're, we're, we're being bombarded today with everything. And your food is your one fight that you have you know if you if you you can control your food that, that's what I'm trying to say the the other stuff that's floating through the air that you're exposed to you can't control that but you can control what you take into your body and that would include eating the right things so that your body because your body can take real food and fight the cancer for you wonderful that is the end of my questions. Do you have anything else you wanted to share today? Yes, I really did. I wanted to talk about a question that is that has bothered me all my life. Um, why sometimes you pray and you ask 
Yehuda to heal something. Like when I first had my cancer the first time, I I didn't tell anybody that I had the the cancer in my breast. First of all, the reason I got the cancer was because I had asked for estrogen therapy, which we talked about that before. Mm. But I didn't want anybody to know that I had the cancer because I was supposed to be a a believer in Messiah. And I, I'm supposed to have this close walk with him. And he, I was asking him to heal me, and he wasn't. He, it wasn't going away. And I was praying and praying, so I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. I thought that it wasn't being... It was something wrong with me why I wasn't being healed. And, you know, I kind of be, I'd like to back up and talk about my mother because that also goes into this. It's kind of confirmation. My mother had a heart disease and she had triple bypass surgery. And the doctor told her that she had to change her diet and quit smoking. And she had, she had a, you know, she loved pork and she loved sausage gravy on her biscuits, you know, and she didn't, she wouldn't give them up. And so three years later, she was back in the doctor's office and she had to have another triple bypass surgery because she didn't change her diet. And she died on the operating table, basically. Uh, he, he, he did all the work he was supposed to do and then tried to revive her back because, see, they put your heart kind of on hold and then they tried to revive her. They connected her heart back up and it wouldn't start back up. He could not get her heart to start up. And she stayed like that for, I think, about 12 hours. And finally, um, they came out and asked permission to just let her go. And we said, yeah, just let her go. You know, it's, we don't, you know. So that was the end of that. But here's the thing. She didn't change. The doctor told her to change her diet. If Yahuwah had healed me miraculously, first of all, I don't know that I would have quit taking the estrogen because I didn't know, I wouldn't have known that the estrogen was causing it. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to the doctor. I had to find out that the estrogen was actually feeding it. I had to go through that terrible experience, painful experience, losing a part of your anatomy. You might think that a, a breast isn't important, but it is. It's a part of you that you'll never get mm -hmm. back again. And, yeah. um, so I had to experience losing that to find, so that I would be ready to change. If I hadn't gone through that, nothing would have changed in me. And so then 14 years later, here I've come down with cancer. Now, the, this cancer that I came out with the second time, it was a little different from the first one because this one started out with a tumor, which then became infectious and was growing. And um, I, my naturopath explained that to me, that, um, okay. that it was growing and it was, going, it was spreading because I developed another tumor after that, and it was just my breast was just swelling and getting so sore and painful. It was just unbelievable pain. And yet in spite of the pain, I was, I feared the doctors more than I feared the cancer. I was ready to just let the cancer, rather than, if my only choice was to go to the doctor, but that wasn't my choice. My only choice. My other choice was to change my behavior. That's the only thing that was going to work. Had Yahuwah could have healed me then miraculously because certainly my walk with him was stronger. My faith in him was stronger. And I prayed and I was, and I had several people pray for me and every one of those people said, you're healed. You, you, I've been, Yahushua's communicated to me, you know, that, that's not the words they said, but what, however they said it, that they said the message that came to them is that I was healed of my cancer. And, okay, so I'm healed. Why do I still feel pain? But I kept fighting it. I, Lucinda was helping me. She, she was actively giving me diets and changing. And I would do one thing for a while, and then we'd change and do something else for a while. And she uh, was there for me every step of the way. 
and the the swelling went down you know but see the thing is with a miraculous healing I would not have changed I would have I would still be on the estrogen I would still be eating the fats and the sugars and the sweets and I, I felt terrible every morning I before I changed my diet I would wake up in the morning and I would feel pretty good and then I'd have my breakfast and I just oh, I'm just so tired I just I wish I hadn't have eaten and I didn't know that it was the wheat that was actually making me feel lousy. And if you don't, if you've never had a, col a good colon cleanse, you don't realize how much better it can make you feel. I, I can't even describe it to you. And then, so so a good colon cleanser, cut, cutting out the wheat for me, cutting out the wheat and the fats, and then. The next step was I added in the um, blended raw vegetables, you know, and uh, a, a dear sister of mine gave me a, a Vita, Vitamix, and so everything I eat, for, as long as, I mean, all the raw vegetables and fruits into the Vitamix, turn it on in, and then I've done this delicious drink, and I'm drinking health into my body, and... Um, I get tempted with other things, and I do give in to the temptations, but if people wonder, and I've always wondered why he doesn't give you a miraculous healing, that's because he's wanting you to participate. He's wanting you to take a step into it. Um, my son is a, is a web designer, and he designed our Torizone.net, and Sometimes I have trouble with it, or I want to do something with it, and he and he could just go in and fix it and do it, but he he won't do it. He says, "Okay, mom, I'm going to show you how to do it," and he he makes me log into my own website. He does it on his side, but he makes me do it. He's on his side watching what I'm doing, but he makes me take the steps to so yeah. that I'll understand what is actually happening here, and I yeah. I need to I need to tell him that I related that <laughs> but so we have to Yahuwah wants us to be a participant in our own lives and I I pondered this and if anybody knows how this relates I would love someone to email me and tell me because I think I've often pondered remember when Yahushua was healing the blind man and I wish I had read this before we started remember he was healing this blind man and he opened his eyes and he said I, I see men walking as trees am I and, and then he had him close his eyes and he, and he spit and made some mud remember that is yeah is this am I doing this right and then he rubbed the mud on his eyes and washed it off yeah. and then he could see clearly have you ever wondered why would the creator of the universe have to go through those steps you know, and, and I yeah. think it relates. And, and if anybody wants to share with me how they think that those two things relates, I'd love to hear it because I ponder it all the time. I always have. I've always pondered that because when when the little girl needed to be healing, the 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 start, uh, the general I guess said, "Oh no, don't come to my house because if you give the word, she'll be healed." And he says, "Greater faith have I not seen than this." You know, he, Yahushua was so impressed with this man's faith. He didn't have to even be there in the house. He just mm -hmm. said the word. So he didn't have to rub mud on that blind man's eyes to make him see. You know? Yeah. So there's a reason There's for that. He wants us to participate in our own healing and conducting our own lives. Wonderful. Um, and what you're saying there made me think of something uh, that Mark and I have always gone through, particularly since having kids mainly, um, where I get concerned about them, something might happen to them or, you know, all those horrible mother fears that you have. Um, <laughs> and I can get a bit paranoid sometimes, but I'm very particular about making sure they're safe all the time. And sometimes Mark will be a bit more relaxed about stuff and, you know, like, oh, they'll be all right or it's only, you know, this or, you know, little things. And then he'll say to me, you know, um, Yahushua won't let anything happen to her, to them. He's protecting them. He's keeping them safe. And I'm always like, yes, but why do things happen to people then? 
who are believers. So what you're saying is like he's wanting us to to take a role in that, not just sit back and I'm going to have to share this with Mark. Because <laughs> 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 I always say to him, <laughs> we need to keep them safe, you know, otherwise we're being, we're not, he's not going to protect them if we're being reckless or something. So, I, you know, yeah. Liz is always saying that too. He says he wants us to take some responsibilities. He says he gave you a brain to, you know, and, and you know, just like Yahushua was told to jump off the cliff and he said he'd be saved, you know, but he says you don't tempt Yahuwah, your Elohim. But, yeah, I, 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 think, I, think, I think we need to find a, a medium ground there. We need to have some faith. And yeah. also, we need to use some wisdom, and, and that's why he put a mother and a father together, <laughs> so that they can be. Mark can keep you from being overprotective, and you can keep yeah. him from being, a, you know, just totally un, you know, watchful. But I, I, I yeah. think fathers, um, yeah, and see, that's why you don't want your boys to be mama boys, you know. It, you don't want them to be totally dependent if you're always teaching them and covering and, and running in. If they never fall down and, and skin their knee, then they're not going to learn to not do that. You know, they. Yeah. Uh, my granddaughter got a tremendous burn on her arm. She, mm -hmm. she was taking something out of the oven. She forgot to have something to set it on. So she was holding it with one, holding this hot pan with one hand, mm. and trying to find something to set it on with another hand, and the thing slipped and burned her arm. But she learned to always mm. have something set out before she takes something hot out of the oven. You know, yeah. we pain. My husband's always told us when my boys were little, pain is the best teacher. Yeah, it will teach you how to walk to walk up and pay attention when you're walking up downstairs. My grandson was was playing a, a little a little handheld video game. They call it a DS. Oh uh, yes. And he was walking down the street steps, wood steps with socks on. And uh, I mean, you know, that's that's a you see, you already know what happened. We heard this awful bang bang and we thought, oh no, I thought surely something was broken but he had the wind knocked out of him. He walked yeah. down the stairs. I, I swear that boy walked all the way down the stairs without taking a breath. And he came down the steps and he said, I can't breathe. You know, and he couldn't breathe. And I knew he just had the wind knocked out of him. So I was just rubbing his back and said, just relax. It'll come. It'll come. He won't walk down those steps in socks <laughs> playing his DS. Now, he might do one or the other, but he won't do all three of those at the same time. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, we we need to there there needs to be a um I can't think of the word I'm trying to think so a, a a balance a balance between the father's total, you know, let go, relaxed and the mother's protectiveness. Yeah. I know on that line um about 6 months ago Luca Luca climbs on everything. He's just like a he's a climber. And we've got shells out in their toy room, like big cabinets and things. And he started to climb, he climbed up them and I wasn't out there watching, but he'd been told heaps of times, don't climb up the shelves. Well, he climbed up the shelves and this day the shelves fell down on top of him and the screaming was unbelievable. And unfortunately he had a glass shelf that smashed and everything. He was perfectly fine. I mean, he had like, he hurt his leg, but we took him to the chiropractor. He was fine. But the fright that he got, he has never climbed on a piece of furniture like that again. Unfortunately, though, Josiah didn't pay attention. And two days later, Josiah climbed on a shelf in his bedroom and the shelf fell down on him. <laughs> so it was all happening around the same time. And we were just like, now the children have got that message. Don't climb on the furniture. <laughs> and they haven't. You got, you got that lesson taught. Let's go on to the next lesson. What do you think the next lesson yeah. is? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. It's horrifying. Actually, they all disappeared the other day and went walking down the street. Um, when I got distracted talking to someone, they went. They wanted to run up and down the road on the grass. Uh -huh. And I said, oh, okay, that's fine because we're in a quiet cul-de-sac. 
but it's at the end of the cul-de-sac, there's a walkway through to the main road. I mean, it's not the, it's not a real, it's not a highway or anything, but it is a fairly busy main road. And so they walked through there and they'd gone wandering off down near the shops to go down to the shops. And I, and as soon as I'd realized they were gone, I went looking for them, but I had Aaliyah asleep in the car and Brandon in the house and three of the boys down the main road. I mean, I wasn't worried. I knew that Josiah had enough sense not to cross, walk onto the road or anything, but I was more concerned about someone taking them. And so since that, we've gone through lessons on stain, uh, stranger danger and, <laughs> and what to do if someone comes up and how to trust someone and all that sort of thing. But um, I think that was, yeah. I mean, things like that happened so that I knew then to teach them about that, I guess. Right. You, you, could, you could keep them in a bubble and they would grow up and not know anything about the world than, than they did when they were born. Or you can yeah. let them have these experiences and, and mom learned a little something too. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all wonderful experiences, you know. And, and sometimes you hood does protect us, things that we can't protect ourselves. I can't tell, count how many times we've had storms come by and they, they just, it's like they just hop. I, I don't know if I've told you this before, but we had a storm. Uh, this wasn't. This was earlier last year in the summer, but there was a storm that was going down one of the main roads that surrounds our our neighborhood. The storm went down that road, and they they were even talking about it on the radio. It was going down Flat Rock Road, and but it never touched us. I mean, the tornado itself was just going down the road. It never mm. touched us, and and this this happens time and time again, and. Yesterday, not day before yesterday, not yesterday, but two days ago, they were talking about how the these the serious storm was going to happen, and they could even cause tornadoes. But it was going to happen right when I needed to pick my grandchildren up from school because I was watching them this week to give their dad a break, and I needed to pick them up, and that was when the storm was going to hit. And I was on the phone with a lady and. It's so easy to forget who our protector is, and I was just telling her, I said, I'm just a little bit tense about this, and, you know, this is on my mind. And she says, well, we don't have to worry about it. He's going to protect you from the storm, and, and I think she just, you know, you don't, you don't have to go into long, strong, elaborate prayers. You, we just agreed. She said it, and I said it. I said, yeah, we're, we're just going to agree on this, that he's going to protect us. Do you know, we never even got a storm. Oh, really? The sun, when I picked my children up, the sun was shining bright, and we went to the playground. It was oh, a beautiful, warm wow. day. We spent a half an hour at the playground, and then the clouds started rolling in, and I, and I was making a game out of it. I said, uh-oh, here comes the clouds. Let's see if we can get home before the clouds do. And, but we got home, and the clouds came, and they, the clouds stayed, but there was never, not even a drop of rain. Yeah. You know, it was just amazing, and, and it was just, we just agreed. You know, here's something else. Yahuwah gives us the desires of our heart. Some people, in, including myself at one time, you can interpret that as whatever you want, he's going to give you. You know, it's the name and claim it thing. That's not what that means. When he gives you the desires of your heart, he puts the desire on your heart because he's about to give you a blessing. And that was an example. He put the desire on my heart to pray for the storm not to affect the picking up of the grandchildren because he wanted to show me. He, he was about to do something and he wanted to show me and, and, and the lady that was on the phone with me, he wanted to show her, look what I can do, look what I will do because I care about my children. So he he lets you know ahead of time and that is the desire he's putting on your heart like if there's something suddenly oh I want to do this I want to talk about this you know and so he he puts that desire on your heart because he's going to give you an opportunity to talk about it wonderful um, just one question going back that I remember I thought of before when you were talking about the cancer did you, um, this second time around, after you'd been through it all the first time, did you go to it when you started to feel like you were getting it? Did you go to a doctor and go through all the tests and everything? Or did you stay away knowing what they'd recommend? I stood away. I can't tell you how many people said, 
well, are you even going to go have it diagnosed that it is cancer? You don't know this cancer. Well, you, you know if you've got cancer. It's just something yeah. you know. I've had it before, and even though this was a different type of cancer, I knew it was cancer. Now, I had a spot, and you can't even see the scar. I had a spot beside my nose, and it's so funny. My husband, Lou, had a spot, same spot. His spot was, but was a little bit higher up where his glasses rubbed. My spot was down here. We both went, now we went to a doctor and had those spots removed because we knew it was easy. The reason we knew it was easy is because we could apply something to it, make it go away for a while, and then it would come back, you know, and it would itch. And it's just an aggravation. It wasn't like an invasion of your body. It was just a... A thing. So we both went to a doctor and had that cut out. For me, it was just mine was so much smaller than Liz. Liz took a little bit longer to heal. He had four stitches, and and I had two, I think. And um, that's a whole different situation. This cancer mm -hmm. was in my that was in my breast. I knew what I wasn't going to take myself to the doctors, the surgeons, you know. Um, in my blog, if you go to my blog at torazone.net, right now I've got the word butchers there. I'm going to remove that because that's not, not very kind. I don't think doctors and surgeons want to be butchers, and that was very unkind. If anybody's read that already, I, I, I ask their forgiveness for me having put that in there. I need to take it out. <clears throat> but, yeah, basically, no, I wasn't going to go because I knew what they were, they were going to want want to run all these tests and you know the mammograms they've proven time after time that the mammograms are not accurate you you get false positives or you may not even they may not even be able to of course the tumor I had was so big I mean what was a mammogram going to tell me you've got a tumor well yeah I can feel that you know <laughs> what's it going to tell me and um so they would have to if they, they they would have to probe and take a biopsy, well, I don't know, but if if you know this, but a lot of times if you open up a cancer, a, you know, cell or something, you split it open, that actually opens it up and spreads the infection. That it'll get in the bloodstream, and yeah. and the infection will go through your whole body. A lot of times when you hear this, they, they've just got it all over their body. That's because the doctors blundered into something, did something wrong, and, and the infection, because cancer is an infection, it just got spread through their whole body. I wasn't going to let that happen. It's mm -hmm. Right now, it, it was at, at that time, it was contained. I wanted to keep it there. I didn't want it to be all over. You know, cancer, you know, they say breast cancer or cervical cancer or this cancer. It's all cancer. It's the same mm -hmm. cancer. They're, they're defining it by where it is. You know, yeah. that that was that was always uh, a mystery to me. Well, how is breast cancer different from colon cancer or whatever? It's all the yeah. same thing. And and so if it if it, it just spreads from one thing to the other. So mm -hmm. no, I did not go to the doctors. There wasn't anything I wasn't going to do anything they wanted me to do. So there wasn't any yeah. point. No point. Yeah. yeah. I know you were talking about the um, chemotherapy. My when I was um, seven years old, my brother, my older brother, had cancer. Um, he was fourteen at the time, and he had all the chemotherapy treatments and everything. Um, and he was better. He was getting better, and he was ready to come home from the hospital. And then the chemotherapy killed him um, when he just turned fifteen years old. And so I know from being, and I was eight when it happened. And I know from at that age, sort of, it just didn't seem right. And it always stuck in my head. That was the only thing I remember was that the chemotherapy killed him. And for years, I thought that the chemotherapy was the cancer. I didn't realize that was the treatment. I thought when everyone said the chemotherapy killed him, they were saying the cancer killed him. And it wasn't until I got heaps older, like years later, that I found out that the chemotherapy is the treatment not the not the cancer and I'm going well how come the treatment killed him you know and didn't understand and I know since that I've had but not understood it but had this fear of uh, that sort of cancer treatments and things because of that knowing what happened to him um and it would be horrifying um to uh, as a mother especially to to have to go through that and then find out that the thing that you thought you were doing to help your child killed them so um 
Yes, I, I, I was great to hear your story about it because it sort of gives a bit more information. There's so many things that you can do. There's so many natural cures for cancer out there. And I think what Lucinda did is she threw all of them at me that she was aware of, you know, and I was just doing it all. But there's so many things out there that I didn't even explore. Or, and, but I did the least expensive things, but baking soda. Yeah. If you, you take baking soda, like just a, we're talking a half to a teaspoon of, of baking soda in a glass of water three times a day will make your mm. body so alkaline, cancer can't survive. Wow. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, I, I, I forget to do it. You know, baking soda is so wonderful. I mean, there, it, it's, anytime you have an upset stomach, the reason I remember to do my baking soda is usually because I'll get an upset stomach, probably because I ate something I shouldn't. <laughs> And then I'll remember, I said, oh, I knew I should have eaten that um, because I, 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 I need to stay away from dairy, but I, I love yogurt. <laughs> and I'll give in and have a little yogurt because it's good. Yogurt is good for you, but uh, the dairy is too much for me. and It causes acid. And I'll take some baking soda and takes care of that. And the side effect is I'm alkalining my body, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, no, I've forgotten it now. I did have another question for you that I've completely forgotten. <laughs> was it about the chemotherapy? It or? was about something along those lines that now I've... No, I've got no idea, sorry. It might come to me. <laughs> okay. But it's very interesting hearing everything that you're saying. It's wonderful. It's annoying me now. <laughs> 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 We've got about 10 more minutes. If you think we're going to run over an hour, I'll have to call Adam down and to change the tape. Okay. Now, well, do, is there anything else that you wanted to share while I think no, of it? Actually, I, that I didn't have anything else. I, I could expound on anything else that you wanted me to talk about. Talk about, did you want to ask me about diet or... Sure. Yeah. I I well I don't know what to say except I can't tell you enough about the fresh. I'm always harping, 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 fresh fruits and vegetables. You know, yeah. you can and and juicing carrots. You know. Yeah. In juicing in your if you juice your vegetable, what it does is it compresses all the nutrition into smaller quantities for you to be able to drink. Because if I took that same amount of vegetable, and even if I put it in the Vitamix, it, it, it makes it easy to drink. I mean, to sit there, you would wear your jaws out because to chew all those vegetables. Um, but if you put it in the Vitamix, you can actually make it tasty and you can drink it down. But then if you juice it, then that removes the fiber and, and, and it's even more concentrated. But the important thing is is to drink it quickly while the enzymes are still alive because the Vitamix and the juicer both, they um, it kind of releases those enzymes and makes them active, and then you take it into your body, and then suddenly you have all these you know enzymes and it's the enzymes that go to battle for you. They fight, you know, your body has a natural immunity against cancer. You yeah. gave that to us. But if you don't feed your body with the proper nutrients, it, it can't, it doesn't have anything in, to fight with, you know, it doesn't have anything in the arsenal. Yeah. Um, I remember what it was now. Good. Um, <laughs> did you have any other symptoms when you started to feel, or either times, like other than the lump and the, and the pain in the breast, did you have any other symptoms that like, tiredness or anything like that that was extreme not so much with this one with my first one I was so I did I was so fatigued there I with my first cancer before I actually went to the doctor I remember I laid down on the couch and Lou was home and I told him I said I feel like I'm dying I felt death in my body and I told him and I really thought I was just going to die I, I reached out for him. I said, Lou, I, 
I think I'm I'm going now. You know, I really but I was just so it was just fatigue. But with with this time around, no. I, I the only symptoms I really had was the pain. I yeah. uh and I, and the fatigue, maybe I was tired, but my diet was was so bad, you know, it really wasn't any different from would didn't notice a difference between bad diet and fatigue, you know, the fatigue. So yeah. Um, no, it was just the pain and the the pain. I can't describe <laughs> the pain. It was so bad. Mm -hmm. And it, sometimes, even now, when I kind of slip, I, I'm I'm not perfect. Hey, I'm I'm weak. Uh, we're all. I think everybody, to a degree, is a slave to their um, taste buds. And I'm yeah. I must be the worst. I think I'm the worst. I want to taste that little bit, and and um, especially when the grandkids was here. Oh, it was so, I, I um, had to have it. I, well, I mean, I had to make sure it tasted right, you know. Anyway, and so sometimes if I go too overboard with some something sweet, sometimes I'll wake up with a little nagging ache, right where right at that tumor or under my arm, and it's like a warning sign. Yeah. It's it's Yahuwah keeping his finger on me, and I think that's why he's... I just answered a question. I kept writing to Lucinda saying, why won't this tumor go away? I've been good. I mean, I was being so very good with all the products, and and I, and I said, why won't, why won't it go away? And she said, well, she had these different things I didn't want to do. Uh, one involved jumping up on a trampoline because she said it w releases... And I said, well, I can't do that because I've got other problems with my body. But So I couldn't do that. Anyway, now I know why the tumor won't go away. He wants to leave it there to spank me, kind of, when I get bad. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I can't get too bad as long as that tumor is there to kind of ache when I've been yeah. bad. Yeah, when I, if I have too much sugar or too much fats, I'll, you know, if I really go overboard... Then that night I'll uh, feel it. Yeah. So no, but that's the only only symptom I've had. Okay. Fantastic. Well, that's been wonderful today hearing all that. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it. Always enjoy yeah. talking to you. I oh, so do I. Yes, it is. I, I love it. I was looking forward to this week. Good. Mark said to me, why don't you um, just cancel it for this week? You know, you got things on today. And he, and he said, and, you know, and, and you had grand, grandkids there and everything. And I said, no, no, I don't want to cancel. I'll do it. I'll do it. I said, I'm committed to doing it. I'll do it. But it was really that I just enjoy it so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. I'm kind of like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. And then Lil say, well, I said, I don't know what to say, you know, and I think it's because I'm put on the spotlight, you know, and I say, I don't, I don't know, what am I going to say? And um, he says, well, just, you know, you it'll come to you, you will tell you. And every time I sit down in the chair and start talking to you, and then it just comes, and then before I know it, the hour's up. Yeah. We're about to, we're about to call it quits, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it's wonderful, and I think you do really well. It sound, it's great hearing. I think everyone out there loves to hear what you have to say, um, you know, like from a, a, a woman's perspective of things and um, and just that you've got so much experience and everything under your belt that everyone wants to hear it. So it's great that we can get it all out of you. <laughs> well, thank you. I, 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 it's a humbling experience to to hear that from you. It's... it's um, a lot of pressure, <laughs> like no pressure. Oh yeah, no pressure. <laughs> I, I hardly think of myself as 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 um, the perfect example. <laughs> no, I think it's you're doing wonderful. Gee, I think you're doing really well. <laughs> well, you ask great questions. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, I I guess Shabbat, well, it's I've got a little bit more time as Sabbath left and. Oh, but you? your day is just beginning with your, your boys. Yes. Okay. Well, say hi to Mark and the boys. 
I will, yes. Okay. They get very excited. You're going to do a show now, Mummy. Off you go. Oh, that <laughs> is send so me sweet. Here. Their mommy's a star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they think so. <laughs> They're very cute. Well, thank you. All right, then. Well, I will see you in two weeks, but I'll hopefully we'll email in between now and then. Okay. And as usual, anyone that's got any questions or topics or anything they want to have discussed to email either of us so that we can um, talk about yes. it. Yes. Because we're always, always love to hear some new ideas. Let us know how you like it. We want yeah. to know. Yeah. All right. All, All right, right, then. We'll see, I'll see you soon. Love you, sister. Love you, too. Shalom. He's good. He's Great is His love and kindness forever.